Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Benjamin Breaker Navani and welcome to the ESL Pro League Season Finals. My name is Benjamin Breaker Navani once again and we are about to be diving into G2 Esports versus Luminosity Gaming. So that being said, we are now should be getting into the knife round, right? Okay, yeah, where do we see decoys getting thrown away? Kappa. Um, not the first time I've seen decoys being tossed, but uh, I've seen NIP... I know for a fact, playing on this map and uh, selecting Terrorist after winning the knife round, but you know, I'm, I'm a little bit curious to see what the choice is going to be here from Luminosity Gaming. This is of course statistically, excuse me, statistically speaking, a very CT sided map. It can be as stacked as say only Terrorist getting four rounds to their name, but uh, we see Luminosity Gaming winning this one. Of course, in, been, in the, been in the grand finals of two majors in a row. We're talking about IEM Katowice back-to-back -back with MLG um, Dallas, I believe it was. or was, No, Columbus, I apologize. Jeez Louise. But uh, now it looks like we are waiting to see what the ruling is going to be. And Luminosity says, we want to stay on CT side. And I, I have to ask myself, is this going to be one of those rounds, one of those maps where they take the pistol round aggressively? Or are they just going to be, you know, chilling back and waiting for the, ter the terrorists to come to them? That's actually one of the keynote plays that they have made previously to actually put themselves up on the pistol round. Uh, most particularly on Inferno when they were playing against Na'Vi. I did watch that Grand Finals and I thought it was absolutely amazing to say the very least. But um, I'm hoping you guys are as hyped and ready to go as I am. I don't know if I'll be able to cast all of today's matches, but I'll be doing my best to keep up with what's going on. Um, this is group stage, GSL style, best of one. And I, I, you know, I feel like there's no, I feel like best of one is a little bit too much in group stages. Like it can be a little bit too decisive at some points. I do have to say I like DreamHack Malmo's group stages, which were based on best of threes, but, um, I, I believe this is only a two-day event coming from ESL. At least that's what I've been provided with. I'm a newbie to casting Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And, uh... I mean, here it is. We're gonna see now the teams just gradually readying, readying up. There we go. There's the countdown. Alright, so pistol round inbound. Coming in from both sides. I just realized something that uh, my face was a little bit far away from the microphone in the last match that I casted bef between um, between Optic Gaming and Astralis. And that, that was one hell of a match to watch. I, I recommend you guys go back and watch the VODs for that. But um, <clears throat> we're going to be seeing just how things develop here in the near future. Very big stack push towards bombsite B. Could also potentially be bombsite A if they want to go ladder room. But no, no, they're, they're going down the staircase. They want they want B. And that's going to be Cold Zero making the opening frag. It looks like me, Fur, rather, is going to be going into ladder room. I think he's been heard, and that's going to come into one versus one at that situation. We do have one watching the rear. Taco, however, carrying his weight. He's lifting very hard. And it's all on one man for this for the terrorist side. Unfortunately, G body is unable to fulfill his duties. If you guys want my sincerest opinion, I feel as though we're going to be seeing ninjas in pajamas in the grand finals. Just you know, thinking a little bit about how they play on train. They cho they you know they take the knife round and they choose to play on terrorist side, but they go, you know, twelve rounds, fourteen rounds on terrorist side against some teams like Astralis or even G2 on this map. And it, it, it drives me up a wall. I know they're not in this game right now. It's just I feel like we're going to be seeing them and Luminosity Gaming in the Grand Finals. Maybe. But LG have that, that kind of mystique to them, and that is what is working to their advantage. They actually played this quite passively, um, as I think everyone was expecting them to get a little bit aggressive on this map. But they are going to be doing that in this particular case. We're seeing Fur already getting a double kill, putting $1,200 in his bank and making sure that his team doesn't lose that man or firepower advantage. This is more or less a situational firepower advantage coming in from G2. We see already Shoxy 
making the opening frag with, or on behalf of his team, using a Deagle. He's already passed the smoke, so Fallen kind of a little bit late to the show there, and G-Body gets one all his own. I, I remember seeing Astralis versus Fnatic on this map. Fnatic was down two versus five, and still Fnatic managed to pull off the win under similar circumstances. They had Deagles, but no armor. And it's plays like this that kind of, it, it really makes the fans excited. We do, however, seeing, see FNX shutting down hopes just a little bit, taking Scream out of this. We know he's at connector, but what they don't know is that Taco is coming up behind them. They probably heard a scope in just now. Wild will be accompanying Taco. Taco peeking that left corner. He should be opening up on G-Body pretty soon. No, he gets opened up on by G-Body, and that is going to be FNX taking advantage of the situation. The pop shot that did not impact on the sniper will be taking him out and down. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was called zero with the scout. I think. He just dropped a weapon for his teammate. Uh, no matter. But G2 Esports are in a very difficult position, to say the very least, on this round. We're going to be seeing now, it looks like, Fur going into the right position with a TMP, but we're not going to be seeing G2 Esports making a unanimous rush. They're, it looks like they're just going to camp this one out for the time being, at least in the beginning. Try and salvage whatever weapons they can. Punish over extensions, but Cold Zero gets that one frag and is just going to hold this position. He loses no HP off of the back of that either, which is very important to note. Oh boy, Taco, gonna find one, maybe a second to his name, indeed he will. And that is going to be Fallen. Now, coming back around back door. Only a P250 in hand, and uh, he just, he basically tags along for the ride, is what he does here. Nothing wrong with that, but Lunacy Gaming taking a near flawless victory. Almost losing absolutely, literally zero HP. But I think Fur took a little bit of heat there. And uh, it's going to be the first rifle round coming in for G2 Esports. They have to make this one count. They have to. If not, most certainly the round after the next one, if they should lose this one. We're talking about round six, where they will have um, enough money for not only AK-47s, but AWPs and full utilities. So what I mean to highlight with this is they'll have not only the same rifles that they have now, but most likely also they will have full utilities to go with those rifles. Shoxy taken down to 91 HP by Fragmentation Grenade in the right place at the right time. But a majority of this push is going towards the back door of Bombsite A, working their way towards what you would call an I call IV in 1.6. Smithy is going to be the one who kind of kind of opens up the plays for them just a little bit. They're playing off of his AWP. They're hoping he gets a pick and then th and that they've got something to work with. <clears throat> there they go. That's going to be now G-Body going in, getting taken down by Code Zero with, you know, just only a FAMAS. I'm not saying it was a mistake. We couldn't actually see because our observer did not catch that. But Shoxy does make it a refrag onto FNX. HP advantage is strongly in favor of Terra, so we do see Fallen getting one off of his AWP. Fur looking for the hopper. Almost looks away at the wrong time. He's going to find Scream, but that will be Scream coming out on top. Fallen gets the refrag, and a, a triple kill to his name by the end of the round. <clears throat> now G2 Esports are in a very difficult position, to say the very least. It feels as though the volume is a little bit too low. Let me go ahead and kick things up to about 50% on XSplit. Make sure I do that here locally as well. Or rather, uh, just make sure I've got it at what I think is an appropriate level. But that's Cold Zero. An AWP all his own. Double op setup from coming in from the CTs. And that's more passive play. And, you know, passive is the way to play on train. But as I say that, Scream does make a nice headshot with a Deagle. That is going to be cool. Well, that's FNX taken down. Fallen getting a second frag. And 
One with an AWP, one with a P250, but that is a nice timing coming in from Shoxy, and I think he landed two bullets that connected. He's the last man standing for his team. Odds are stacked against him as he doesn't have a rapid fire weapon, but that is going to be Taco coming in and cleaning things up. Still turns out to be an expensive win from Luminosity Gaming. They don't earn money as a team this way. What it's important to note is that if they continue to lose rounds like this, they'll they'll be worn down to things, buys that look like, you know, just Kevlar vests and Famuses. And this is something that's going to put um, G2 Esports in a somewhat confident position going into this round in particular. We've got three AK-47s and two AWPs coming from the terrorist side this time around. Not going to call it particularly odd, but I mean, well, now we do see Smith's taken down. His his AWP is removed from the map. So yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Scream there. Just kind of backpedaling a little bit if I examined the situation correctly. Yes, that was number seven. Picking up the bomb, and it looks like they are heading now towards back door. Shoxi does make a return frag. It takes, you know, nearly a minute of in-game time to find that that return. But um, the more the merrier in the shoes of G2 Esports. And you can see that they're taking their time. They're trying to gather more information as they try to poke into one bombsite or another. If they were to have caster vision, I imagine they would be playing for bombsite A. But uh, you're talking about something that would be literally almost like having ESP hacks. If we were to give them just caster vision for a minute. That's going to be first spotting one. Taking him down. That's G body. Just no, no longer there. FNX gets one to his name as well. And what's better here is if the counter-terrorists want to at the end of this round, they can actually pick up AK-47s. If they take down Shoxi, then that looks like it could be another AWP salvage. They've got just moments to get to it, and that is going to be it. Cold Zero should drop that for Fallen very shortly, if not the other way around. There we go. Cold Zero and Fallen are taking the AWPs this round. And that's six on the board for Luminosity Gaming. G2 Esports have got to feel, at the very least, a bit demoralized at this particular moment in time. Oh boy. Here we go. That's two already for the Luminosity Gaming side. Three fallen just, you know, it looks like he just caught, him, caught his target through the back, through the spine, really. Nearly through the lungs, but RPK coming in with two very nice refrags, and now it's all on screen, but he's taken down immediately. Oh, boy. I I don't know how to explain the, the feelings of this. This is this is one of those moments in the game when you look at this and you think it's, it's a bit of a... I, I don't know how else to say it without using an expletive. But it's, whew. I mean, it is going, logically speaking, the way things should go when you're on CT site for Luminosity Gaming. But G2 Esports, I mean, they, they've got to start to find a break in all of this. Otherwise, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. As we can see, that bank is building for Luminosity Gaming. We're talking about one player already reaching about 12k. That's going to be Fallen now getting the opening frag. He's going to be refragged. First switches to the pistol. It's going to be a flank coming in to take him down, however. But it's one versus three. Scream last man standing yet again. He's got a deagle in hand. He's got armor, a helmet. Just has to stay calm and aim for the head. That's all he needs to do. Still an AWP on the board. He's just got to get that first bullet in. I. Oh, boy. He must know now where one potential threat is. That is the position of, uh, I believe that was FNX revealed. A little bit confusing. It may have actually, it may have been called Zira. Attempted shot coming in from Scream, and they know where he is now. That that shot just revealed his position. And if FNX wouldn't have gotten him called Zira, like he, he would have been hard pressed to miss that shot. But you know. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Eight rounds in a row now, and G2 Esports are on max loss bonus for. I think that was f three losses in a row now. 
Couldn't even get the bomb plant to this point in the game? Now that I think about it, I don't think they've even scored a single bomb plant. I don't think they have. I mean, Luminosity Gaming are just taking control of this map, and they're they're in the driver's seat right now. Alright, so... Four AKs and an AWP are now on the board for G2 Esports. We do see a push towards backdoor IV, if you will, coming in from Smiths and G-Body. I don't think anyone is optimally looking in that position just yet, coming in from the CT side. Although we do have someone close to that location. Yes, it's actually Fallen. He, he never ceases to surprise me. He made me call something out wrong again, but that's a smoke coming in. And the push may be coming momentarily. As 37 seconds remain on the board, and... Not a single frag has been made yet, and it looks like we may just have a plant coming in, coming in from the CT or the terrorist side. Excuse me. Fallen does make the opening frag, however. He's shutting down that prospect rather rapidly. Four versus five, and they've got to make this hold happen. G2 Esports take this round. It could be, you know, the moral fiber that they need to work with. But as I say that, we got. Well, it looks like Smith gets one. I they they were so focused on RPK there. I was surprised that he lived through that, but none of, the, none of the bullets penetrated that wall, but it's still three versus three in this game. Smiths, he doesn't know how close he is to hitting a target if Cold Zero were to just pop out a little bit more. And vice versa. Well, there's no saving this round. G2 Esports put the first one on the board for themselves. But can they do this consistently and concurrently? We can see that the economy here, it's not too terribly phased for Luminosity Gaming. They've still got a couple of players that are big on money. Of course, Cold Zera and Fallen, the uh, <clears throat> AWP toters. No, not too terribly a big surprise there. I guess you could say in one of the older, older, older Call of Duty games, when it was more popular on the PC, one of the things that was uttered by one of the main characters was, if you want to win a war, simply learn to survive. Don't push, don't get over aggressive. And uh, Cold Zero is certainly taking lessons from that rule book. Four AKs and an AWP, it will be for G2 Esports. But if they lose this round, they're on 1400 in terms of winnings. They only get that much money going into the next round. Something of a blind standoff here. I wouldn't say a blind standoff, but. Definitely um, <clears throat> a not-so-pretty standoff. That's going to be one going in for G2 Kinguins, Smiths, and another, I think, for his name. No, I'm sorry. That was actually Shoxy who got the opening frag. Cold Zero does something we don't see him do often, and that is miss. But it looks like he actually impacted the foot of his target. Shoxy does stay alive to take down another. But will he be able to survive out this round? There it is. Smiths gets himself another one. Fallen, the last man standing, only an AWP in hand. He's going to be hunted down here, essentially. Or will he be? Misses the no-scope. A little bit of friendly fire? No, I'm sorry. Uh, the spectator switched just as the frag was made. So, uh, G2 Esports there, actually, four-man win. Very respectable. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Profit off of the back of that round. Are we going to see this happen for five more rounds in a row? I mean, including this one, there could be a potential end score of 8-7 if we see G2 Esports really, really give it their best. Luminosity Gaming, on the other hand, you know, it's starting to show right now the condition that they're in is not that great. Uh, decent buy. Couple of players with some, I wouldn't say stacked utilities, but more than enough to hold their own ground if they were to hold one site or another and split them between each other. We do of course see that uh, it's going to be Cold Zero at back door. He's got an incendiary that he can expend if he should need to. 
for has one all his own as well. Anti-entry smokes coming in from the CT side on bomb site B. Oh boy. 40 seconds remain and no one has fallen yet, but we have seen damage done to both sides. And I don't mean to say no one has been killed by fallen yet. I mean to say rather no damage or no one has been taken down or fragged, but here we go as the action pours into bomb site B. The bomb is down, not planted, but dropped. And we've seen now two for two in the exchange. Smiths does manage to get himself a third with his Molotov, or rather make himself his third, perhaps. Maybe it's one versus three now. And it looks like he may not be able to hold out too terribly much longer. He's been spotted. He does take down one, looks for the second, but fallen. We'll shut that down. He's not going to be hunted. He, he says, I am the hunter. And they also get away with not only the fuse win, but both AWPs at the end of the round. I meant, you know, I wonder if we'll see an M4 drop for. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It looks like one of the AWP toting players made that M4 drop. I believe that was Fallen who did it. Just made a full rebuy of all utilities and then purchased an M4 for his teammate. Towards a back door, it's going to be a pretty heavy push coming from the CTs, and G body should be able to hear what's going on. If an X makes the opening frag, another return frag coming in from Smiths, however. And that is going to be him getting another. I mean, ironically enough, for, I, it feels like maybe there was something slow on the reactions there. Maybe it was something to do with that explosion that had just taken place. He wasn't expecting someone to go through, but. That now creates a three versus four in favor of G2 Esports. Shoxi manages to get one to his name. Luminosity Gaming all of a sudden are not looking too terribly hot, especially as RPK takes down Cold Zero. I, I, I really don't want to make a false... No, no, no. I, I won't even talk about it. Don't even worry about it. I, I just don't want to create any false speculation or anything else of that nature, but... Um, if there is a halftime, maybe I'll talk about it. Maybe I won't. I mean, a halftime pause is what I mean to say, rather. But FNX managing to hang on to that AWP, make the win a little bit more expensive to G2 Esports is something that I'm sure his teammates are able to thank him for. At this point, every single frag matters. But it looks like he's about to get uh, very seriously sandwiched. Footsteps are heard. And that is going to be G, buddy. Just taking him down. I mean... FNX there, he was basically swinging in both ways, if you will, and no, that was no pun intended, no pun intended. Uh, swinging to left and right because he, he, he didn't know if he was about to get sandwiched from two different directions or if he was just meeting one enemy. And it can be very confusing at some points to make sure that you're turning a corner at the same time as your teammate. So now Luminosity Gaming are going in full eco. I wouldn't say full eco, but I guess you could say somewhat forced by mode. RPK makes the opening frag, and now we're going to be seeing, looks like, Smith's getting another while Scream gets a follow-up. And this this should basically just be an easy round for um, Luminosity Game, or excuse me, G2 Esports, especially given that they, they've got the bomb planted now. Um, and the CT side, they don't have any powerful weapons. No one's in that James Bond mood right now where they want to go in and get a sneaky defuse. No one's doing that at this moment. Yeah, this isn't VP versus FaZe. This is <clears throat> Luminosity Gaming against G2. The Brazilians against the Francophones. And it is... I, I feel like... I don't want to call... I, I don't want to jinx this, but it's looking like it could be a shorter game than expected. I'm... 
A little bit curious to know what the analysis desk thought of this. Here we go now. Luminosity Gaming and G2 Esports are going at it yet again. This is the penultimate round of the first half. Oh boy. Oh boy. And that is actually a lot of bullets that Scream missed going on to FNX there. And FNX manages to get two before he's finally refragged. Earning himself $1,800 on top of if his team were to win this, the win's bonus. But... I, the firepower advantage, it still feels like it's there. But as I say that, why, like Fallen, he just gets the shot that he needs for it too. And Fallen, what, what on earth? Off of something that was a bit of an awkward force by to say the very least, we see Luminosity Gaming pull off the win. But G2 Esports still have a bank to work with going into the final round of the first half. And I think this is where it matters the most. If, if we were to see them reach five rounds, we're talking about Threshold. What I mean to say is it's compatible and they can come back from that kind of position. At four rounds, it, it can be extremely difficult. Train is just one of those maps, but it feels as though the only team that... I, I don't mean to downplay ESO Pro League by any means, but I feel as though the only team that may be taking this, this entire tournament the most seriously in terms of training regimen, practice, and everything else in between would probably be NIP. Sorry, I need to take a deep breath as um, as uh, this is just me casting on my own. I do apologize, but there we are. Entry looks like it's going to be made for backdoor here as we've got who lurking on Ivy but Cold Zira. RPK and G-Body making their names count and G2 Esports are now up in a 5 versus 3. Taco coming back in for a single refrag, however. He is a little bit low HP at this moment. It's looking like we're going to be seeing now a two versus two technically. I mean, still, given that, you know, we've got one target that's essentially one shot. But as I say that, Kingwin comes in, unloads his clip on his target. Apologize as uh, I just realized that health bars were off for the longest time. And hitting escape twice can fix the problem. Unfortunately, by technicality, we do see that Luminosity Gaming do take the final round of the first half. Just as we saw Shoxie hunting down the last target. That's going to be good half coming out from both sides. LG calling out that they are ready now to dive straight into the second half, but G2 Esports must be in a different mindset right now. The pistol round is where it all begins. The comeback, or it could be the beginning of the end. Natural firepower advantage on CT side. You're talking about being able to make a one-tap headshot with the USPS or the P2K. With Glocks, it's kind of a different story. Yes, when you get into within 20 yards of your target, then most most definitely it's a one-shot kill to the head. But um, at longer distances, you can, you can potentially take them down by 90 HP, leaving them at 10 or 20 HP. But uh, I guess we'll see just how this goes in a short moment. You can see now that G-Body gets 1-2 for his time. And he's down to 1 HP. That's going to be now Fur coming in, getting the refrag, picking up his own USP. S and pa packing bags and leaving. Like, okay, guys, let's get on to bombsite A very rapidly. And this is Luminosity Gaming, I think. Not, not. Yeah, they're playing an aggressive pistol round. There's, there's no getting around that. But, uh-oh. Wait, I don't think. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to be picked up on adequately by... Uh, for going in there. Never mind. Never mind. Looks like it may not be Scream Waiting for someone to turn that corner for what's he doing here? I think he's on the other side of electric. Yeah. Oh my 
Gets one sunk in his face, and that is going to be Cold Zero, the last man standing for his team. Block battles can be very difficult against USPs, and now, especially with three versus one, he <laughs> drops to his death, unfortunately. And um, I, I guess that's going to leave him with exactly $1,400. He's like, all right, all right, so I'm going to lose about $100 more, but, you know, big, no big deal. Four TMPs coming up from the CTs, and that's a respectable decision, I think, but they're facing off against Tech Nines. They have to make sure those bullets impact where they need to. Fallen very nicely played. We'll take down Smiths. Now we've got RPK with a double kill to his name. Scream's been spotted, and it looks like Fur and Fur is going to be reinforcing Fallen here. We don't see either side very eager to push forward, but of course the T's have to move into this 3 versus 4. It's going to be RPK taking down Fallen, finishing what he starts, or what his teammate starts rather. Fur gets a nice refrag. It's 2 versus 3 at this moment. <laughs> wow. Crazy headshot to say the very least. But that is an expensive win coming out from the CT side. G2 Esports have been punished somewhat economically. Four Tech Nines and a CZ coming out now from Luminosity Gaming. They are, it looks like, more or less an A execute right now. I could be wrong. Just have to wait and see what the decision is. They're coming out from the ladder room right now, and they're rapidly encroaching on bombsite A, but it's one versus three at that peculiar location. RPK coming in now for the Vengeance Frag. He tries to shoot while jumping, but it doesn't work. Three versus four now. And at bombsite B, it's, it's just... It's it's turning into a massacre in favor of G2. Fallen is now looking like he may be the last man standing on behalf of his team. Does have a TMP in hand. Does he want to salvage it to the end of the round? I think not. But if he's going to go down, he's going to go down swinging. Is exactly what he's thinking. He has a Tech 9 and a TMP in hand. Frag out, and that is one very lit T. Couldn't do anything but die in this situation, unfortunately. They're just playing Papa CT right now, or rather, just now. As I say, G2 Esports were a moment ago, but this is a little bit ominously confusing right now. As if I'm not mistaken, this should be the round where Luminosity Gaming have rifles. They, they didn't manage to make a single bomb plant, if I'm not mistaken, but it looks like they've been blowing the dough on every single round trying to uh, catch G2 Esports by surprise, and that just didn't pan out the way they wanted it to. Here we go. Looks like now it's going to be Scream making that opening frag, unfortunately, as Fur just pops out behind Smoke. And, uh, well, there's been one for one in the trades, but now it's four versus two, and with only a Glock, I mean, there's only one way for... Cold Zero to go at this moment. Taco, last man standing for his team with a Tech 9. I mean, he's either got to learn to dodge bullets or he's going to have to take the entire world down here. Does manage to get one first time. Not bad. Can he make it two? Unfortunately, he can't. So, this is it. The first true rifle round coming in from Luminosity Gaming on the second half. And, uh,. Some of us may be wondering just a little bit, you know, is is this, you know, a poor choice coming in? Or is this just G2 Esports being too good on CT side? Meta-wise, it looks like this is going 
I wouldn't say exactly as planned, but basically, this is living up. This is this is train living up to its CT sighted reputation. Big spread coming in from all of the terrorist side. No one's eager to push forward. They're they're waiting for some kind of an overextension coming from the CTs. You can see now Scream is... I'm trying to examine where his position is right now. Am I looking at this correctly? Oh, okay, okay. He was below staircase the entire time. So maybe he heard them going towards bombsite B. That should prompt some kind of a rotation. Indeed. He's actually going there himself. He's ready for the entry. And so too are many of the CTs, but is this going to be a fake or is it going to be real for Bombsite B? I mean, the it's it's hard to say really. I mean, there's all kinds of utilities being tossed back and forth. What is going on is a very good question to ask ourselves right now. 20 seconds remain. They've got to commit to it now and it looks like it's going to be... It's It's been made known. It's Bombsite A, but they got to get that smoke on connector. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult. It's going to... The retake should be easy. 13 seconds remain. Bomb is on site. Smoke. It's being planted through now. Not a single frag until after the bomb is officially planted. Gold Zero makes it happen. And now, Fur, he's looking for the back door push. He will not be able to shut it down, unfortunately, but will take a ton of HP off of Shoxy. This puts Luminosity Gaming at somewhat of an advantage. Now, definitively, as we see the Fallen make the frag he needs. He hears him. Gold Zero does to RPK. Now it's all on G, buddy. One versus two. Can he make it happen? He takes down Cold Zero. He doesn't want to gamble. He just turns this into an expensive win for the terrorist side. Duh. But this is interesting, to say the very least. I mean, yeah, once you start to think about it, you know, five wins in a row... Rather, not five wins in a row, but four wins in a row for G2 Esports. You would think that they have a lot of money banked, but this is where they're going to have to cut a few corners to make ends meet. And you can see that Scream is doing that by purchasing a Mag 7. You see the money that they have right now is not looking that great. But with Defender's Advantage, they may be able to pull this off. Two players at back door, but we see now it's going to be FNX backing off for the time being. We do see Taco kind of continuing to peruse the idea of holding that position, perhaps poking forward a little bit, but he will be greeted by Smiths if he happens to actually just pop out there. He's waiting for someone to get over aggressive at uh, bombsite A back door. If I'm not mistaken, we see Smiths on top of. Uh, Ivy train. No, no, no. That's not what you would want to call it. Uh, backdoor train car. As it's one of the only ones that you can actually climb up. 30 seconds remain. They've got to make the execute now or never. And it looks like they are going to be attempting that. We do have Scream on staircase, if I'm not mistaken, or just underneath it. And it looks like it's going to be A main, the entrance. So we can already see two, three frags coming in from the terror side. Smoke is on bomb site. They've got to make that plant happen now. Everything's going to hell in a handbasket, and that plant will not go down. So now Fallen's going to try and hold on to his AWP. He manages to get back into A main. He's got six seconds to live. So it's now or never. Spots a target. Unfortunately, Scream takes him down. So this is quite the sour pickle to deal with if you are Luminosity Gaming, because this is how much money you have to deal with after you lose two rounds in a row. Unfortunately, we're going to have to tell these guys to just cheer up a little bit, maybe bring something together.
And this just in, we've got the Fnatic versus Cloud9 bans and picks. It would actually be Cloud9 choosing Fnatic starting first for their bans. Fnatic banned Cobble, Cloud9 banned Overpass, Fnatic banned Dust2, and Cloud9 banned Mirage. So it was also determined that they would be playing Inferno. This round, to speak of, we actually see RPK getting the opening frag. It does cost him a lot of HP. The same story for Scream, but he actually didn't get a frag out of that. So let's just wait and see where things go here. This particular moment in time. Oh. Oh boy, the rotate. I mean, it, it's it's almost as though all hope is being shut down at every turn, but Cold Zero coming in, getting a nice Juan Dig, unfortunately is not able to make it happen yet again. And we see Smith end it with a triple kill to his name with RPK getting a double. By the way, for Luminosi for... For Luminosity versus G2, this one, I, I should have mentioned this at the very beginning. We saw Luminosity shoot, let G2 start with picks and bans. So G2 banned Mirage, Luminosity banned Cash and Dust 2. G2 banned Overpass and Inferno, and Luminosity banned Cobblestone, so that left us to play with Train. RPK makes the opening frag, and this is G2 Esports bringing things, like, you know, two rounds away from being 12-12. It's going to be Fur coming into mid-A. I think he saw his target. He just wants to try and close the distance, but he might... Uh, he could have potentially been blindsided there. Smith makes the flick happen and catches his target, but it's three versus three in this particular position. G-Body just... Wrecking fools and taking names, getting himself a triple kill by the end of this round. Struggle for positioning in some ways. I mean, it, it almost felt like, you know, G2 Esports, they were, they were about halfway getting there, or rather, Luminosity Gaming there was about halfway to the point that they would need to be to actually corner that sniper and take him down. But of course, the other half was almost symmetrically held. Um, by the remainder of G2 Esports reinforcing Smiths. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's gonna be Shoxy taking two to his name. I think one was a no scope, if not a, a, a quick scope. Oh. Fallen gets one, but he's immediately refragged? Yeah. And that's actually now two versus three. Difficult but doable if you're Luminosity Gaming right now. Oh boy, Cold Zero just, he James Bonds his way past this. Looks like, uh, he still won't James Bond his way past Shoxy. It was, it's a little bit creepy when you, if you go back and look at a demo and you think to yourself, wow, I got past that guy? He wasn't even looking. Oh, but nonetheless, this is looking like Luminosity Gaming want to pause this, take a deep breath, take a sip of their monster, and think to themselves for a minute, what on earth is this conundrum that we are in right now? How do we get out of it? What are we going to do now? And that's something that only time will tell. It's most likely a tactical pause as we don't have them announcing it as being a tactical. I mean, G2 Esports still have theirs if they want to use it. But uh, we'll be back in a short moment, guys. Don't go away. All right, guys, we are back. We do see something of a quasi buy coming in this time around, and it looks like it's going to be four Kevlars. One CZ, P250, and three Tech Nines. Um, not a full buy. They've still got money to spare. And they're thinking about what they're going to expend on this round. A site can be much more difficult to take, but it looks like this is turning into. Okay, Smoke's Throne over Main. 
There go. There they go. Just diving into it. But it looks like Scream got boosted on top of Toll Booth. I guess you could call it a check-in station, whatever you want to call it, at Connector. <clears throat> And that is something that just almost entirely counterplayed what they were anticipating. But they do get the bomb plant, which is very nice. They've only been able to get one round at a time, really. It's hard to put into terms that um, makes sense. But sorry about that, missing the action. Cold Zero makes one, and that is... Well, with a two-man win, I mean, they salvaged the AWPs, which is very important. That means they just need to make three M4 purchases for the entire team this round, which should be easily done. As you can see, the money is stacking here for G2 Esports. If you're talking about breaking the economy of G2 Esports right now, you're not talking about winning one round. You're talking about winning two, three, three rounds maximum at this point. Here they go. They've got the full buy coming in. Luminosity Gaming does, but can they work with it or not? G2 Esports. Four-man stack onto Bombsite B. The Molotov slowing them down. And that is a blind opening frag coming in from FNX. Very nicely done. And now Ivy sort of belongs to them, but that's three frags immediately coming in for G2 Esports. Two versus three is now the name of the game. And that's going to be Scream shutting it down, bringing it back to three versus one. All on Cold Zero now. He's got the pressure of the world on his shoulders. At least all the pressure of Brazil. It is worth noting that this is a best of one group stage. GSL style. The loser of this is not directly eliminated from the tournament. But we'll have to play one more match at the very least to determine whether or not they stay alive in this tournament. I never would have thought it would be LG, but G2 Esports... On 13 rounds. And if I'm looking at this correctly, Cold Zero wants to salvage that AK-47. He doesn't want to try and take the win. On top of everything else, I mean, really, the players... All mechanically sound. All mechanically solid. No denying this whatsoever, but... He's hoping that he's going to have something to work with going into the next round along with his teammates. His teammates should have... Wait, 20 seconds remaining. Okay, he could be going for a flank. Will not hit even a single shot there, unfortunately, on the Scream. Wasn't blinking, therefore he was not hit. And Scream just seals it out with a triple kill. G2 Esports. They just need one more round, and they are at the very least guaranteed, guaranteed overtime and match point. Full buy, once again, coming in from Luminosity Gaming. More or less a force buy if they want to avoid overtime. And there's no time to say it other than now. They have to win. If not this round, most certainly the next. RPK gets one. FNX gets another. Two versus four. We go. FNX looking for Smith. He sees him. He peeks. He gets shut down. And that's now all on Cold Zero with the AWP. Shoxy knows not to look towards the main. Missing the quick scope. We're going to be seeing Scream take him down. And that is match point now for G2 Esports. Luminosity Gaming are not going to have a pretty buy this round. Going for the max buy. Could be Galil's accompanying AKs. But this means that G2 Esports will go on to the winner's group of this match, if I'm not mistaken. Oh boy, G-Body making the opening frag. It's four versus five now. If Luminosity Gaming want this, they cannot afford to lose another man. Economy is almost no consequence here for G2 Esports. Not by any means. For going back around A main, he's only got a Tech 9 in hand. Two Galils and an AK will accompany him throughout the rest of this round.
Making the backdoor entry, and that's going to be RPK getting one before he's immediately refragged. Three versus four now. I mean, the math is there, and G2 Esports is staying on top of the screen. Gets one. He's refragged. It looks like no. It's Smith who's traded out, and that's GG coming out from both sides. G2 Esports will take map number one. Or excuse me, their their first match, and they will go on to the winners' match against. I don't know what on earth was that sound. Uh, just it came out of nowhere. I do apologize, but um, we will be back after a short break with our next match, which I imagine would be the winners' match. So we're going to be seeing. Optic Gaming going up against G2 Esports and see how they fare. Don't go away, guys. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs> 